7,300 and I think 60 pounds, 7,360 sounds about right. North Trail, 30 foot-ish, uh, rear kitchen, private front bedroom with closet slide coming in on trade here at Haylet RV. This has spent most of its time park kept. It has been towed very little. Although, uh, being a lighter weight model with wide stance axles and a bunch of remote control fun things, like this has remote control awning, remote control jacks, uh, slides. You know, it's very handy for bopping around to different campsites. One of the things that we pride ourselves on here at Haylet RV though, is just brutal, complete transparency. And I think it's one of the biggest reasons you should consider bringing your business on this camper or any camper, frankly, uh, to our facility. One of the things that we noticed is we spotted a line of delamination stemming from that window going down right here. It has suffered a window leak at some point. One quick glance says yes, they obviously patched that up, but unfortunately, it had suffered a historic leak right there. Overall, I don't think it's anything major. I don't think it's anything that affects the use of the RV whatsoever. But that's not my decision to make. It's your decision to make whether it's okay or not. My job is to just tell you the truth about it. So let's hop inside and see what it looks like indoors. So here's our bedroom window. And the good news, this is proof positive. Whatever went on here is exceptionally minor and it was addressed very quickly. Now, it doesn't even really show up on camera. But if you see the RV in person, you might be able to detect how the wall kind of, it bows out here ever so slightly. Now, if I get up in this area, pardon me, I'm using my phone for light, it's all solid, and then you get right here where your toe just touches the, uh, you know, block between the side stand and the storage compartment, and you can feel a soft spot right there. It doesn't stop you from using the RV. It's not anywhere that you would ever go out of your way to put your feet. It's not like your foot's gonna go through the floor. It does, very small, extend into the pass-through compartment. But that's it. That's like the biggest derogatory thing I can say about the RV. I think it's a significant item to note, but I think as long as you keep on top of your uh, care, maintenance, and upkeep routines, that's never gonna be an issue. Now beyond that, there's a lot of good on this camper. So if for the right money, you'd say, you know what, as long as there's nothing else real spooky going on here, I could live with that, I could work with that, you know. I think you're going to get a really good overall deal, good value out of this RV. But frankly, any RV you need to keep up on your care and maintenance, so I don't really see how that's any different from anything else. It's a bummer that it's there. It's a cosmetic item, really, because it's not structural. It's not hurting the RV. It's not falling apart. So let's see what else this one has to offer. One of the hiccups with most traditionally laid out rear kitchens, which is what this is, this is a traditional rear kitchen layout, is when the slide's closed, you lose the kitchen, which is the whole point of the camper, obviously. Well, they did just enough here to prevent that. If you do the little sideways travel trailer, whoop, kind of two-step, which even a bigger fellow like me can do, you can get back here, and they left enough room, you can even still get to the refrigerator. They fixed the one problem that exists with most rear kitchens, and it makes this one much better for transit, although a floor plan like this is awesome for a desti awesome? Awesome powers <laughs> for destination use. <laughs> Personally, I like rear kitchens. I like them a lot. You know, when you stand here, this thing has the look and the feel, really, of like a double slide model, but with only one slide in the living room. You've got all these big windows, and What's cool in this camper is every window that you see pretty much has like a partner window across the trailer from it, so it just gets wicked good side breeze. This was built during the airbed, hide bed phase of the RV industry, and almost every single, basically any RV company who didn't use the actual Aerobed brand of airbed, they were pretty much trash. So if you do plan to use that as a hide -a bed I would recommend planning probably maybe $20 off Amazon to replace that mattress and if the if that's all that stops you from taking the RV home I'll grab 20 bucks out of my pocket run to Walmart and buy an air mattress no big deal they're just not that it's not that hard to come by dinette uh, and the uh, sofa can obviously fold into sleepers one of the neat things this is a no knee knocker dinette you don't have a whole bunch of pedestal legs through there just the one right on the uh, exterior so you've got far more leg room and you see how you've got the doors for easy access to the storage under that dinette and one of the other things that this one has, like any rear kitchen, is just gobs of countertop and cabinet space. 
You'll find above the kitchen and the bedroom that uh, Max Air Power Vent fans were added to give this thing some really, really good airflow. And uh, again, with those big cross breeze windows, and especially back here in the kitchen where you're gonna cook up a storm potentially, it's nice to have that. All of our cabinetry has hidden hinges, which gives it that nice sleek look. And that in conjunction with the huge amount of solid surface counters that we have back here, including those flush mount sink covers, it gives it a great aesthetic appeal, but frankly, it's very functional too. There's just less uh, in-your-face hardware, and there's just more countertop prep space. And this thing has all sorts of cabinet room. Now, you might notice, like, you see this wooden grate in this big slide-out pantry door right here. The RV is currently winterized. Your pump to access that is right below. So that's the faceplate for all the stuff, all the mechanical items that are hiding under the kitchen counter right here. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just removed because the RV's winterized. You'd have to put it back on, uh, you know, later when you de-winterize the RV. And it's just four screws and they're all present. So we've got good cabinet space, good counter space, plenty of room for our soaps and, uh, you know, pots and pans and things like that. Another neat thing over here is the original factory chairs were swapped out. And I love what they did here. It gives it like almost like a sort of beach house kind of feeling. These are wicker, like Euro rocker style. They're, they're gliders is what they are. They're not just like fixed wicker chairs. And those nice pads in there make it very comfortable. If you wanted to, you could probably slide those things outside on a nice sunny day under that remote control power awning, which, you know, is overlooked by this huge picture window on the campsite of the RV. And that's one of the things I love about rear kitchens. You get the same mega window, you get the same chairs as a rear living room, except they're looking at your campsite and not the back of a neighbor's camper. All the original electronics are present and accounted for, and then some, frankly, like the uh, addition to the of uh, the uh, Max Air vent fans. And you might have noticed how the previous owner also swapped out the original um, steps for a nice set of uh, more ride steps so that the RV doesn't rock and roll as people come and go. Some of the lights have been replaced with uh, just simple uh, incandescent to LED swaps. Basically, they were doing that as they needed to. Like, you see that the main cabin hasn't been swapped out yet, but some of the other areas have been. They were just kind of doing that on the fly as they needed to. We have a dual-entry bathroom here with a very fifth-wheel style bedroom, bathroom, combination slide-out closet. So you've got, like, a, a near floor-to-ceiling linen cabinet built right into this thing and a nice big standing shower as opposed to a travel trailer tub. And they went very minimal with the rest of their fixtures, and I don't mind that, because it actually just makes everything look and feel so much bigger in here. One of the other things that they have here in this laminated floor is no floor vents. So this is a very easy clean uh, kind of model. Up front here, bedroom, pretty simple but effective. Now the, the bed is not perfectly centered within the RV. It is shifted this way ever so slightly. That kind of does a couple things. You still have a nice side stand over here. We still have full overhead storage. All of our hanging wardrobe space would be there, plus a whole truckload more contained within that slide out. And uh, they upgraded this vent to be a Max Air power vent fan, and they piggyback the power of that off the light here. So uh, the switch that's on the wall that controls the ceiling light also controls the power to that. The good news is you can still individually control on off each item, so there's no real like janky weird function downside to it. It just works pretty well. The skin and the decals look good. I don't see any sort of peeling or flaking or oxidation. We've got slam latches on this really large front pass-through compartment. A couple things they do that I like here. You've got little hangers, not a big deal, but little hangers for like our, our manual override cranks. We've got a, a nice big wide gap in here. I noticed some hitching and stuff over there. A lot of times when people are trading in RVs out of habit, they will take that stuff off and slide it in the pass-through. I don't know at the time of this filming if those objects are intended to go with the sale of this RV or not. I don't have that information. So if you're curious, give our team a call. We can verify at that time and, and go from there. A nice thing that they do, these buttons right here control our four corner power stabilizer jacks. And I love that they are inside of that baggage compartment so that if there's that neighbor kid whose parents unfortunately did a poor job of telling them not to touch other people's things, you don't have to worry about said neighbor kid messing with your power stabilizer jacks. Um, 
you know, if, if they raise the jacks, they could just simply destabilize the trailer a little bit and cause it to rock and roll. No big deal there. But if they decide they want to try to lower the jacks, they could break them or burn out a motor. And obviously that's not a good thing. And having those inside a locking compartment, that is a good thing. Uh, power tongue jack, power awning. Again, your corner jacks, your... Um, Oh, awning, your slides, they're all remote control operated. This does have an enclosed and heated belly. The trailer model number says 30. I haven't put a tape measure to it. I'd be shocked if this was anything less than like 33-ish feet, maybe more, uh, potentially closing in on 35. Just knowing what I know about the RV industry and how the links work out in these things. And that is where those wide stance stability axles will really come into play. Because if you are, you know, it's well within the weight of a half ton, but it is kind of long for a common half ton truck. So if, uh, you know, those wide stance axles right there, that will help eliminate a lot of that uh, sway and wiggle in transit. I also just noticed something here I didn't notice the first time. We have a little bit of toad skin delamination on the rear wall right here. Let me take a look at this. We're doing it in real time right now. Okay, so what's going on there is there is air, gases, nitrogen, etc., trapped inside that laminated wall when the uh, process is completed. It doesn't look like it was engineered to be vented. They probably thought the wall was small enough, it wouldn't matter, but enough heat had been exposed on that wall that the gases expanded and they caused the skin to bubble up a little bit effectively. That's called toad skinning. It's something I've actually seen more on Heartlands than about any other brand. I don't think they're as susceptible to it in today's market, but this was built during the period where I do tend to see a lot of it, mostly on their bigger sidewall fifth wheels, though. It's kind of a fluke anomaly to see it on the rear wall, but hey, it's there. And again, obviously we don't hide stuff from you guys. This is a telescoping rear bumper back here. It slides open, so if you want to turn it into a cargo deck, a bike rack, maybe handy for a small lightweight generator or something like that, you could. Tires look good. A lot of times when something's parked for long term, the tires tend to get kind of neglected. I don't see any sort of weather checking or weird wear patterns here or anything like that. And again, previous owner did upgrade to the Moride stable steps here. Overall, little bicycle handle tape on that uh, entry handle there. That's kind of funny, but it works. You know, it's funny, but it works. It works really well, like a fox, but... Overall, I think she's all right. I think if what you're looking for is maybe like your first couple's camper, you're not looking for like a pop-up or something, but you don't want to go neck deep into a brand, brand new one. This would be like a great starter lightweight before you jump into something like a fifth wheel. Take this out for a year or two, see how it treats you, keep on top of your maintenance. You could flip out of this thing and really only, um, you just, you're just absorbing your usage value. You're, you're gonna get back out of it, you know, what you put into it. I've definitely seen worse. <laughs> I've seen much, much worse. I've seen a motorhome with mushrooms growing out of the carpet. I don't see any of that happening here. I don't think it was neglected. I think there was one little, oh crap, and then they took care of it right away. Overall, and, and, and like when you see people add money, like Max Air fans and, and Moride Steps, that's a really big thing to me because if somebody adds money to an RV, that means that they give back to the camper. They don't just take from it. So they tend to be the type of people that maintain the RV. Overall, I do think that was the case here. Otherwise, the skin wouldn't be gleaming. The decals would be flaking. The roof wouldn't look good like it does. She's she's not bad. She's really not. So give us a call. We do hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivering everything in between. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone.